receded from the headlines in recent weeks, but the investigations into President Trump are continuing in both courtrooms and the House of Representatives. Now, some of those events, they are generating headlines. Former Trump National Security Advisor and admitted fellow Michael Flynn, well, he has walked back into court yesterday testifying against a former business associate. Flynn has recently switched attorneys to one who is very vocal as a critic of these investigations, leading many to wonder if, in fact, Flynn is angling for a presidential pardon and if his cooperation agreement with the feds is about to, in fact, be torn up. And the administration's attempt to stifle investigations in the House is leading to formal votes today for the House to hold Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross and Attorney General Bill Barr in criminal contempt of Congress, both over the census citizenship question and their refusal to testify and turn over documents. The Justice Department, it would be responsible for enforcing the contempt citation, so this is seen as a mostly symbolic gesture. Then, of course, there's WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. CNN airing a long piece showing Assange meeting with associates while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. It also shows his associates bringing him material including flash drives that may have come from Russian sources. Associates are also seen removing more than 100 hard drives. But the next big development in the Trump investigation so will likely come one week from today. That's when former special counsel Robert Mueller will testify before two House committees. In the extended time, that is why the testimony was delayed a week. Mueller has said his answers will not stray from the information in his report, though Democrats, no doubt, will try to get him to say more and Republicans will likely attack Mueller's credibility. Well, no attacking our next guest credibility, nor do we need to try and get him to say more. He does that all by himself. I'm talking about Roland Riopelle. He had an attorney in New York City. He's a former federal prosecutor in his own right, and he's been our man on the Mueller probe since it began. Welcome back to RFL, my friend. Good to be here, Richard. Good to be here. All right, let's give um, a preview, in fact, of what to expect next week. But first, what, if anything, did we learn or have confirmed from the TikTok um, relating to Assange and seemingly the complicit relationship that he, when he was with WikiLeaks, was having with Russian sources? The idea that he was just some character who wanted to get all the information out in the general public. It was targeted against a single candidate with seemingly a source um, that was driven to harm Hillary and help Donald. I think that the latest revelations, which include the uh, security uh, videotapes from the Ecuadorian embassy in London, uh, really uh, drive the point home that Mr. Assange was uh, conspiring with the Russians to get the uh, hacked emails uh, that were leaked. And so to the extent there was a conspiracy to leak Hillary Clinton's emails, we now know that Assange was in it with the Russians. He was every bit as much their agent as anyone else. Uh, and remember, one of the things that Mr. Mueller said and one of the things that his report says is that um, he was not able to develop enough evidence of the next leg of that conspiracy, namely that the Trump campaign was in a criminal conspiracy with Mr. Assange. And indeed, you know, I went back and looked at the report, and this is what the Mueller report looks like in its discussion of the connection between the Trump campaign and uh, Mr. Assange. There's an awful lot of material redacted from the report on the basis that disclosure of it would harm an ongoing matter. I suspect that Congress has seen a lot of that blacked out material. And that may be a focus of Mr. Mueller's testimony. It is in the report. It was redacted, however, for the general public, and Congress has gotten an unredacted report. Given this disclosure that shows that the Russians and WikiLeaks were working together, now the, this open investigation in the Mueller report becomes a very interesting thing to track. So let's try and, and preview what we think we're going to hear both the substance and also the theater attached to next week. Um, I saw numbers, and I think that's pretty much accurate, that probably 95%, if not more, of the general public never read the 400-plus page report. 
and I was shocked, maybe I shouldn't have been rolling, the number pretty close to the members of Congress that haven't even bothered to read the report. How much different is it from your experience having something read and a physical thing rather than something in living color, in effect, the author of the report, Mueller, saying the very same things? Do you think it will be revelatory next Wednesday, or do you think it's going to be a letdown because, well, we've been there, done that? I think there will be some significant revelations. Again, you know, there are parts of the report that were redacted that may well come out, and that'll be brand new news. And, uh, you know, for the bulk of the general public that's never read the report, uh, there'll be a lot of details uh, that come out in Mr. Mueller's testimony that they just haven't focused on. I, I do think this will significantly advance the ball for anyone who wants the general public to get a basic comprehension of what is in that report. I, I do think the public will be educated by this, not as much as they would be by reading it for themselves, but you know, the vast majority of people are never going to read the thing. So this will be their first real direct experience of it, not through the bogus filter of Mr. Barr and Mr. Trump. I'll give one more name that has already kind of tipped off where Republicans very well may go. Uh, Devin Nunes, who at one point, um, you know, was running the Intelligence Committee in the House um, uh, before uh, he was, um, in fact, censured for uh, uh, behavior, as we'll get into in a second, and also obviously the midterm elections. But nonetheless, Roland, um, he's accused. Bob Mueller of having some back-channel relationship with Democrats, that he's got a gotcha vendetta against um, President Trump. I don't know. Again, I'm naive, maybe. But the idea to attack the credibility of Bob Mueller, decorated war hero, lifetime unimpeachable service uh, to government in the, in the public sector, um, and, by the way, a registered Republican for whatever it's worth, if they go down that road, which I believe they're going to, they've already telegraphed it, will that play really badly, or are we going to see that from just about every Republican when it gets to be their turn in the chamber to use their five minutes? I do think that what we've heard from Mr. Nunes is just typical of him. It's, it's rank stupidity. Um, I am sure that Mr. Mueller is discussing the basics of his testimony and, and possible questions with some staff members of the committee and maybe members of the committee themselves. It's routine for a lawyer, uh, if a witness is willing to have a discussion with them, to talk to them about the basics of their testimony. There's no nefariousness in that. And I agree with you strongly, Richard, that Mr. Mueller's reputation is so stellar that for the Republicans to try to besmirch him as a biased witness seems to me uh, to be going on a fool's errand. I mean, the, if, if you do read the report, you see how very careful and measured he is and how unwilling he is to go farther than the evidence in terms of drawing conclusions and inferences and things like that. He is just a very deliberate, uh, very staid person. I think attacking his credibility will boomerang on anyone who tries that gambit. And now let's do the flip side. Uh, you certainly over the years uh, had your share of witnesses that wanted to stick to the four corners of testimony, but you're trying to get more from them. And we, you and I both don't like the format where there's a lot of show ponying going on for everybody with their five minutes. Sometimes they don't even coordinate lines of questioning, so they either duplicate it or take us off in tangents or use it just to basically, you know, uh, use it as to give a, give a five-minute speech. That all said, if you had your five minutes with Mueller... What would you focus on in the report, and how would you try to get him to elaborate beyond what's already on the written page? I think what I would do is, you know, it's my understanding that Congress not only has the report, they have underlying law enforcement reports from FBI agents and other law enforcement agents who worked on the investigation. Those reports will contain a, a level of detail that the Mueller report itself doesn't have. Um, and when Mr. Mueller says he's not going to go beyond the four corners of his report, I believe what he means is he's not going to draw any inferences or 
make any statements that are not totally substantiated and consistent with what's in his report, but there's going to be a lot of factual detail that Congress has that the public does not have. And if you burrow into that, a lot of times you'll have some very interesting revelations. And again, you know, here's the report about the Trump campaign's connection to WikiLeaks. If Congress has an unredacted version of this, and I think that they do, then they should be asking Mr. Mueller about the redacted items to the extent he's willing to talk about them. And if they do, there will be new revelations within the four corners of the report that will, I think, be shockers uh, in this testimony and will get the press's attention and the public's attention. Well, as they say, must see TV, and it's going to be a week from today. Roland, I know we'll be talking about it. As always, I appreciate the time. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Richard. All right, everyone, when we come back here, there is some new video out that Donald Trump is hoping you'll never see. It's him, buddy buddy, with child sex fiend Jeffrey Epstein, albeit many years ago. The two palling around and oogling women. But the real question tonight is, why is a judge even considering bail for Epstein, given all his money and all his alleged victims? We've got the very latest plus analysis from the legal panel straight ahead.